President Tsai Ing-wen, who is on a state visit to Central America, met Paraguayan President-elect Mario Abdo Benitez in Asuncion today. The two heads of state agreed to focus on investment, infrastructure and trade as the three focal points of future relations. Tsai also invited Abdo Benitez to come to Taiwan in October for the National Day festivities. On the eve of his inauguration, Paraguay's president-elect Mario Abdo Benitez welcomed President Tsai to his home, where the two met for an hour. Abdu Benitez emphasized that the Republic of China on Taiwan has always been Paraguay's good friend, a loyal friend. This was the case in the past, it's the case now, and it will remain so in the future. The 61-year friendship between Taiwan and Paraguay has been tested by constant Chinese interference, giving rise to repeated reports of troubled ties. Tsai's personal appearance at Abdo Benitez's inauguration is seen as an attempt to shore up and reaffirm the relationship. During the meeting, President Tsai sincerely extended an invitation to President Abdu Benitez to go to Taiwan in October. This will be his first state visit after taking office. The details of the bilateral framework will be jointly announced in Taipei. The heads of state agreed that future bilateral relations would focus on investment, infrastructure and trade. As for how the cooperation will be carried out over the five-year term of President Abdo Benitez, more details are expected in October. During her stopover in L.A. en route to Paraguay, President Tsai made an unannounced visit to a popular coffee chain, and it had an unintended effect. After her visit, 85C Bakery Cafe's office in China rushed out a statement clarifying where it stands on cross-strait politics. Transiting through Los Angeles, President Tsai Ing-wen made a coffee stop at a branch of 85C Bakery Cafe, a business that originated in Taiwan. The staff was all smiles during her visit, but the following day, the cafe's China office issued a statement that suggested the presidential pit stop had been the source of anxiety. The headline of the statement identifies President Tsai as, quote, the leader of the Taiwan Authority. It emphasizes that the 85C Bakery Cafe staunchly supports the 1992 consensus. It says the chain upholds the belief that the two sides of the strait are one family, as it serves consumers on both sides of the divide. 85C Bakery Cafe hopes to expand its presence in China. It's eyeing 800 locations over the next year or two. When such a large part of your underbelly is exposed to China and you allow the situation to develop unchecked, you not only hurt your turnover, but also incite conflict among shareholders. Nearly 60 percent of the coffee chain is on the other side of the strait, like HTC, Chimei and other Taiwanese businesses that have put down stakes in the China market. 85C Bakery Cafe doesn't want to rub Beijing the wrong way. This isn't the first case and it won't be the last. This is political interference in normal business operations. Even if to us it seems incredible and unreasonable, this is what happens in China. And it's often done by inciting nationalist sentiments. Responding to the statement issued across the strait, 85C Bakery Cafe's head office in Taiwan was low-key saying only that the company was under pressure to take care of its employees. Well, the countdown is on for Taiwan's campaign to participate under its own name in the Tokyo Olympics. By August 29th, campaign organizers will need to submit 280,000 valid signatures to election authorities to satisfy the requirements for a holding a referendum. Only two weeks remain before the deadline, but activists say they are feeling optimistic. Taiwan's name rectification campaign is collecting signatures to hit the second stage threshold of the referendum process. At the Xingzhu train station, volunteers have been collecting signatures for three hours every night, adding at least 1,500 signatures each week. Using the name Taiwan lets us indicate that Taiwan is an independent country. Chinese Taipei lends itself to the impression that we are the same as China. If I were an athlete, I'd very much hope to be able to proudly proclaim that I'm from Taiwan and to be able to bring my flag out to be honored. At the opening ceremony, I like to be able to see my national flag. I like to be able to sing my national anthem. 
So far, the Tokyo Olympics name rectification campaign has collected more than 200,000 signatures. That's still a fair distance from the 280,000 signatures that must be submitted to election authorities before the issue can be placed on a ballot. The submission deadline is August 29th, leaving two weeks left to gather enough signatures. But activists are optimistic, pointing to the enthusiastic response in Xinju and in Taidong, where a pro-localization group has helped to gather signatures. We've been determinedly hoping that the people of Taiwan will rise to the occasion. We want to be Taiwanese, who have a national team and exceptional athletes. Why shouldn't we be able to compete under the name Taiwan? The Taiwanese people's rights will have to be earned by us all. In the last mile, activists across Taiwan are pushing hard to get on the ballot, hoping to achieve a sea change in representation at the next Olympic Games. And now let's take a look at some top international news. At least 39 people died in the southern collapse of the Morandi Bridge in Genoa, Italy on Tuesday. Rescuers worked through the night to account for all the victims, and Italy's president called for a serious and severe examination into the cause of the disaster. Yosemite Valley, the crown jewel of the Yosemite National Park, reopened Tuesday after a three-week hiatus during its peak season because of a deadly wildfire raging in the area. The fire is now 86 percent contained after burning more than 96,000 acres. Japan's government is preparing to evacuate a southern island after the threat of a volcanic eruption increased dramatically. Japan authorities detected increased sulfur emissions and volcanic earthquake activity on the island in Kagoshima Prefecture. Vermont Democrats have made Christine Hellquist the first openly transgender person in U.S. history to win a major party nomination for statewide office. Hellquist won the primary for governor and will take on the Republican incumbent in November's general election. And that's today's top international news. Back in Taiwan news, an army of athletes flew out to Indonesia this morning to compete in the 2018 Asian Games, which officially opens on Saturday. This is the first time that Taiwan's athletes have chartered a flight to attend a sports event. The flight's passengers include gold medal hopefuls like weight, weightlifter Guo Xingchun and queen of badminton Dai Ziying. <laughs> It's four in the morning before daybreak. Athletes competing for Taiwan at the Asian Games in Indonesia have already gathered at the Taoyuan Airport. The Games officially begin on the 18th, and for the first time, Taiwan's team is taking a charter flight. Today, 290 people set off for Indonesia, where they will compete in 17 events. The newly inaugurated sports administration head, Gao Junxiong, appeared at the airport to send them off. This time, we've chosen to use a charter flight to get to Indonesia. Actually, this is also a way for us to demonstrate the mobilized strength of our consolidated team. Among the passengers were Queen of Badminton, Dai Ziying, badminton sensation, Zhou Tianchen, and Universiade gold medalist, Guo Xingchun. It feels like an entire army going to war. My condition is okay. As for my goal, well, we'll see when the games begin. Today's flight delivered only about half the Taiwan squad. This year, Taiwan will send its largest Asian Games delegation in history, with 588 athletes competing in a record topping 36 events and two demonstration events. Youngsters have put Taiwanese baseball on the map again at the Pony League World Series in the U.S. The 13- and 14-year-old All-Stars enter the tournament with two victories in 24 hours. In the first game, Taiwanese pitcher Wu Xingjie pulled off a perfect game, the very first in the Pony League's 66-year history. In the second game, Wu was a reliever for 2.2 innings and struck out five batters. The teens are aiming for the Pony League title. If Taiwan gets the title, it will for the first time clinch the coveted baseball triple crown after already winning this year's Bronco World Series and Palomino League World Series.
A local photographer spent three years documenting erosion and subsidence along Taiwan's west coast. His collection of prints, titled The Submerged Beauty of Formosa, has been exhibited in Taiwan and Europe. The haunting beauty of his photos underscores the need for change in the way humans treat the environment. My name is Yang Shunfa. I've enjoyed photography for more than 30 years now. Some of my artist friends call me a laborer artist. With the rising tide of the sea, an entire house is nearly submerged. The laborer artist Yang Shunfa adopts an oblong shape and applies an ink wash effect on his images. The result is a beautiful and gentle treatment of the serious problem of subsidence. <laughs> I don't want to be graphic. Instead, I want to make it aesthetically pleasing, as if I'm gently whispering to the viewer, what you see is beautiful, but this is really subsidence. Three years in the making, the submerged beauty of Formosa documents the nation's subsidence crisis. The exhibit captured the hearts of audiences in the Kaohsiung Museum of Fine Arts and as far away as Paris. <laughs> If you say the name of the exhibit in Taiwanese, it becomes a homophone for, is Taiwan beautiful? This is precisely the question I want to pose to the audience. Taiwan indeed is beautiful, but it's a beauty that needs to be preserved. Yang says that this is the message that he hopes his audience will reflect on. You've been watching Formosa News. I'm Celia Chan. And I'm Ken Lee. We'll leave you with scenes from the sixth stop of the UCI Downhill World Cup in Canada. We'll see you. Take care.